Welcome to The Mind of Steel. This is the show where I, Reynard Wilson, delve so deeply, so deeply into the world, nay, the mind of one man. His name is Mark Steele, and he's often referred to as Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. And today I want to talk about Mark's views on science, in particular, experimental science. We are all familiar with the names of Michael Faraday, Marie Curie, James Clark Maxwell, Errico Fermi. These are the people who asked gigantic questions to the cosmos and received answers that transformed our understanding of nature. But should we add a new name to this pantheon? Of course, I'm talking about Mark Steele himself. Does he deserve to be thought of as amongst humanity's greatest experimental scientists? Well, that's the question I intend to ask and answer today, with a little bit of help from Mark himself. So let's tune in to an episode of the Save Us Now daily broadcast in which Mark Steele describes an experiment of such staggering importance. It beggars belief. Something. Remember the experiment you used to do at school, where you get a jar full of beans, you put all the beans in, and then you say to everybody, how many beans is in the jar? I, I believe this is going to be a truly transformative experimental moment. It's going to redefine our understanding of mankind's position in the universe. It's going to hold up a mirror to reality and squeegee away the dust and reveal vistas hitherto unseen by human eye. And because one of the most important principles of experimental science is reproducibility. I've brought my own jar of beans. Here it is. They're red kidney beans that I sometimes use for making dolls. But I'm going to lend them to science for this episode of Mind of Steel. Put all those numbers together, right? And then you average them out, right? You can get very, very close to the actual number it's well known that Mark Steele is very expert. He's, after all, a, an inventor. He's a whistleblower. He's a weapons expert. He represents people in court. His insights into government legislation are, are second to none. But today we're looking into his ability uh, as an interdisciplinary, theoretical and experimental physicist. I, I just wonder where this is going to reach. What is this insight that, that Mark is going to deliver us based on the, the idea of simply asking school children in a classroom to estimate the number of beans in a jar and then average it? Well, well, surely we are going to get somewhere because Mark wouldn't have wasted the first five minutes of his Save Us Now daily call talking about beans in a jar if he didn't have a valid, important and insightful point. I can either be exactly on the number or, because you see, that's thing, that thing has already happened in time. Somebody's had to put those beans in that jar. So you see, they've already connected that information to source. And once you understand the power of how you connect the source, so you then go, <clears throat> 230 beans. 230 beans. Well, that's amazing because I never actually bothered to count the beans before I put them into this jar. But if Mark says the jar contains 230, well, I guess he must be right because he is connecting with the source. I would have perhaps tried to estimate the number of beans via maybe a mundane method, maybe by subtracting the, the mass of the jar and the metal lid, and then dividing the remainder by the average weight of a red kidney bean. But that's not for Mark, because he can connect to the source a numinous and ethereal spiritual entity that pervades the cosmos and acts as an intermediary between jar fillers and jar counters, thus allowing Mark to know almost immediately, almost in the same way as he knows so many other things, what the number of beans in this jar is. And just think, if you can count beans in a jar just by connecting to source, what else can you know? What other insights that might be hidden to mere mortals like me are obvious and available to a towering genius 
like Mark, a man connected to the source. I tell you, the people that are dragging this freedom movement are those people. Well, that's just the fact that they're pretty dim or they're either psychotronic weapons that are being used on them, right? which is dead easy to do. I've had people who I've worked with who've went, you know, bonkers, but it's psychotronic weapons that's being used on them. Well, admittedly, that seems like quite a jump from the experimental jar of beans. But maybe Mark has a point that if he knows how many beans are in a jar, maybe he can also diagnose the cause of somebody else's mania. If somebody in Mark Steele's life has become bonkers, could it be that the source is telling him that that person is afflicted not by some kind of biochemical abnormality in his brain, but by a psychotronic weapon, a kind of device known only to Mark Steele and people who read a lot of science fiction books. This would be some kind of device, maybe, that beams negative emotions into somebody's head. I mean, I can sit outside your house with a piece of kit uh, and pour the radiation and basically create a situation where you become suicidal. I do hope that Mark has controlled for the placebo effect, because there's a very good chance that if somebody knew that Mark Steele was loitering outside their house, they might also be feeling a wide range of negative emotions. Can you imagine that right now, looking outside the window and instead of seeing the sunset or you know, a beautiful field with jumping springbuck or roe deer. You see Mark Steele's pink sunglasses wearing face. And then you turn back to your house and you bury your eyes in your hands and say, he's still there. And then you notice that he's holding some kind of design that appears to be whirling and bleeping. There's a device in his hand that's apparently pouring out radiation in your general direction. Well, is it the device that's causing your negative emotions, or is it the mere presence of Mark Steele? Now, I don't know how to perform an experiment that would tell the difference between those two possible outcomes, simply because the device that Mark Steele seems to be describing is entirely theoretical, but the effect that Mark Steele has on people, I think, is not subject to any kind of doubt. If I see massive amounts of negativity, like lists of people who are supposed to be government agents, right? Like everybody, everybody that's making a difference is some type of agent, or oh, well, that's what you're being told. You can tell that's psychotronic weapons either used because you can make these people batshit paranoid. Mark is referring to the phenomena whereby members of the truth movement often accuse each other of being government agents. They might accuse you of working for Brigade 77, the Metropolitan Police, MI5 or MI6, without any regard to the functions or missions of these agencies at all. It's just an insult. But are these people members of government agencies? Are they deluded into thinking other people are members of government agencies by the means of psychotronic weaponry? Or are they simply paranoid buffoons who reach for the most easily available playground insult and apply it without due caution or care at other members of their own movement because their movement is entirely vacuous, based on no evidence at all and full of people who are very simple-minded and just tend to be of a nature that, that is likely to fall out with one another. I don't know. Maybe there's something to, to Mark Steele's psychotronic weaponry theory after all. I mean, really, you can really, really twist our mind up because normally you'll find they'll take drugs and they will absolutely believe what they're doing is correct. But in point of fact, they're just controlled opposition. They're actually literally using mind control techniques against them. Mark's theory is that the reason why so many people in the truth movement, including himself, are paranoid is nothing at all to do with the vast amounts of cannabis, cocaine and alcohol they consume. It's all down to the psychotronic weaponry that has been targeted at them. Well, that seems entirely plausible. And, and therefore, we must conclude that the vast amounts of weed that 
typical truth as smoke has absolutely nothing at all to do with making them paranoid, making them believe ridiculous things, and making them spout the kind of ludicrous twaddle that we often hear from Mark Steele. Absolutely unconnected events, and the fact that there is a well-recorded link between people who are heavy consumers of drugs and a tendency to say strange things, well, I think we should just discount that because Mark's psychotronic weaponry theory is far more interesting, isn't it? So what they've developed is that psychological warfare games. That is 5GW. Yeah, it is a thing. We've heard enough about it. And you see, when you hear enough about it, it's like the beans in the jaw. People are talking to source. You're manifesting the reality of it. So it's going to come to pass. The evidence that psychotronic weaponry is being used to target people in the truth movement in order to make them paranoid and say strange and confusing things, such as accusing each other of being government agents, is actually obtained by a manifestation of the source, the strange and ethereal force that Mark Steele connects to that allows him to do miracles, and amongst other things, count the number of beans in a jar. Well, it all fits together so perfectly. I'm just wondering how anybody with the slightest shred of sense could dispute such a well-argued theory. So that false prophecy, we need to, it's very, very important right, that we identify what is in the jar, those number of beans, what we're getting from source, right, or what's not. So if you want to be part of the truth movement and resist the government's psychotronic weaponry, your first line of defense is a jar of beans. Simply knowing the correct number of beans will allow you to determine whether the information you have obtained is from the source or not. And if it is from the source, then you can go on to trust that information and you and your jar of beans will be able to be successful in the truth movement, maybe launch some conspiracy theories of your own. Hasn't today been another wild ride into the mind of steel? We've learnt so much about Mark just by contemplating a jar of beans. We've learnt that Mark doesn't simply count beans, he connects to the source, a cosmic ethereal entity that some may refer to as God, some the grand geometrician, some as a cadre of angels whispering in Mark's ear the number of beans in jars. Not just the number of beans in jars, though. So much more. Mark understands why members of the truth movement are paranoid. And it has nothing to do with their latent drug addiction. No, it's everything to do with psychotronic weaponry, an evil and malign invention of the state intended to turn sensible people like Mark Steele into paranoid wrecks who say and do ridiculous things. What terrible people they must be. But once again, Mark has come to our rescue because through the contemplation of beans and jars, we can know all that is correct, all that is right, and all that is proper and we can overcome all of the adversities of life itself. Well, me and my beans are going to step off into the world now, and uh, I hope you find yourself a jar of beans and fill it as full as you dare, up to the brim, if you so wish. And if you ever need to count them, don't put them on a weighing scale. Just ask the source.